Hey guys, Angel Tactics here, and today I'll be giving you a tutorial, a basic tutorial, beginner's tutorial on redstone, and this is going to teach you a few logic gates. It's going to teach you how redstone moves, how it operates, um, the block powering concept. It's going to teach you about inputs, outputs, basic stuff like that, and as this series continues, I will teach you about more complicated mechanisms and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy my new redstone series so this will be the first video let's get started first you need to know a little bit of general knowledge about redstone before we get started in doing logic gates or anything so <clears throat> this will not be the most interesting tutorial but it will get the job done and it will teach you about redstone so an input is basically something that powers a block or powers an output right so right here we have a torch torch is our input we can also use a lever we can use a button different inputs can be used for different reasons levers give off a constant signal whereas buttons give off a quick signal as you can see so I'm gonna use levers for the examples okay so right here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 uh, that might have been 14. Okay, so right here, <clears throat> that was a little too far, but I don't care. As you can see, we have 15 blocks of redstone, and it's being powered by this lever. Okay. And as you can see, the redstone is traveling 15 blocks. You can count it if you want, and that's how far redstone travels. And whenever you want it to go farther than that, as you can see... It accepts an input here, but it will not accept an input here. So if you want it to travel any farther, you can add a repeater, and it will go another 15 blocks after the repeater. But if you want to save a little bit of repeaters, let's say you're making a huge redstone computer or something, or you just want to save some delay in a long circuit, you can add a block, so it powers the block, powers the repeater, powers the block, and then it extends another 15 blocks. So you're saving yourself two blocks by doing that. Just a little trick I thought I'd show you. Next thing about redstone. I need to teach you about powering blocks, the block powering concept. So if I go out a little bit, I can power this block. What does that mean to power a block? It means that if I put any output on or next to the block that's being powered, it will affect it. So if I add a piston, this piston is going to act as if it is being powered directly by normal redstone. Okay? And there are some exceptions to block powering, like some blocks cannot be powered. Basically, just ones you can see through cannot be powered. For example, um, I can't power... Let's find something. I can't power a half slab because I can see through the top of it, right? So any non-full block cannot be powered, okay? So there we go. And it will accept input from all sides, pretty much. So there we go. That is the block powering concept. And if you want to get a signal through a block, what you can do is you can do this, add a repeater on this side, or you can add a repeater on this side. But it will not just go with normal redstone because redstone does not accept um, power from blocks. Pure redstone wire does not accept that. So you have to use a repeater, which will add one tick of delay. And just a quick side note, before they had repeaters, they would use these things called uh, double knot gates. And they're basically double inverters, which I'll get it into later. But um, as you can see, they act just as a repeater. It's kind of awkward because I didn't put a sticky piston there. So yeah, um, repeaters do the same thing, except they have one tick less delay. Repeater is when you want to extend a signal, right? It's like this. Okay, so now that you've learned a few basic ideas, I'm going to teach you about another exception of redstone mechanics. Glowstone is a, an exception to redstone. So, um, let me get another lever. Okay, so if I do this, and I try and, uh, let's say, 
go up like this, try and extend my wire vertically. The problem is this block is blocking it, right? So if I put a block here, it's going to block this redstone. It's going to cut it off, right? Unless it is glowstone or glass or any see-through block. There's another word for see-through. I just can't think of it. Leave it in the comments below. I'll add an annotation, but anyways, as you can see, it doesn't disturb it at all. And the cool thing is, um, you can't really power, you can't really power, um, you can't put, well, you can't put redstone on top of glass, but you can put it on top of glowstone. So let's say you want to make your redstone signal travel up. Let's say you have a piston. We're going to put this piston right here. Okay. Let's say I want to power that with this lever. Well, I could either make a spiral of redstone up and lead it into the piston, or I can use busing. And by the way, this will not work on the Xbox version because you cannot place... Well, currently it won't work because you cannot place um, redstone wire on glowstone. So, oh, I really don't like this toggle downfall. Okay, hopefully the rain stops. So, uh, that's how that works. And if I want to power this, what I could do... I'm failing at powering it right now. Because it kind of ended up uneven. Not how I liked it. So, there we go. That powers it. And it powers it instantaneously. So this is going to instantly power this, even though it's not right by it. So as you can see, it's instant, right? Instant wire, right there. Okay. Now you've learned pretty much all of the basic concepts of redstone wire that I can teach you. That's basically how redstone behaves. And one more thing I need to teach you, just the last thing I can think of before we get into logic gates, is that redstone powers the block under it. So even though you don't really notice it, redstone is powering all these gl grass blocks under it. And if I put it on top of a block like this, it's powering this block. That's the only reason why torches depower whenever you have a redstone signal leading into it, right? It's because this block can be powered, and if I put redstone on top like this, it will power the block under it, which powers this torch, right? So you can power blocks under redstone like this, right? So it acts just like um, normal block powering does. So if I were to directly power it, it would act in the exact same way. Uh, let's do it like this. It would act in the exact same way as if I powered it using a uh, block instead of just directly hitting it with the wire. Alright, so now you've learned pretty much every basic concept of redstone. And I think I'm just going to teach you the logic gates now and not save that until next episode. Because I don't want to have this completely boring and just teach you the really basic stuff. I want to get into some other stuff too, and I just have this completely boring tutorial. So we're going to do logic gates. I'll just show you a few examples, and um, I might show you some more complicated ones in the next episode. So a logic gate is uh, its basically a circuit that takes an input, performs some logical operation, and then it hands you back an output. Okay. So this is a quick example of one. This logic gate, pretty much uh, every other logic gate will use this logic gate. It's pretty interesting, actually. So um, I can do this. This is a logic gate. And it says when the input is off, the output will be on. And when the input is on, the output will be off. OK, so it's an inverter. It inverts the output. OK. And just one more quick thing I don't think I told you is when, whenever you use a torch, it can power the block above it. That's pretty common knowledge, but I just want to make sure you guys have a solid grounding and know absolutely everything. So if I do that, that is a not gate, right? So it has one input. Sure, you can have two inputs. Most of them, most of the uh, logic gates in the redstone wiki will be listed with two inputs. 
and they are shown how they will act if they have two inputs. So, this is a logic gate that requires two inputs. It has to have two. I'm going to extend this redstone out. Okay. So we can do this. Redstone, not redstone block. Torch. Then we're going to lead this on back over here. Piston. I like using pistons to demonstrate things. So, this logic gate basically says um, that input A, so you say A, and B must be on in order for C to be powered. So, A and B must be on in order for C to be powered, right? If just one is on, it's not going to work. Okay, so I can't just power this one, and I can't just power this one. Now, if you want to look into exactly how it works, then you can see right here, um, these torches, both of these torches are powering this redstone piece right here. This redstone piece powers this block, which powers this torch, deactivating it. And that is basically how it works. It just sends an output from that torch to this um, piston here. So if I do this, if I flick one on, that's one input on, the other's not. Then it will depower this, or it will power this block, which depowers this torch. But this is still on because this torch is here, which means the block, or the, uh, the piece of redstone will not depower. So as you can see, that works both ways, and they both have to be on in order for the output to be on. And just so you guys know, usually whenever you invert a redstone logic gate, it will be called something different just just so you know it's just usually something different whenever you invert it okay so an AND gate would be called a NAND gate okay alright so in that's just how it works inverted okay alright so that's a really simple logic gate um, I show you the NOR gate or the NOT gate I mean I have show you the NOR so AND gate, I'll show you the NOT gate. Now this one is a little bit different, it's a little bit uh, more complicated, but I think you guys can handle it. So I'm going to show you how this works. And I'm going to use the uncompact version, the bigger version, just to show you exactly how it works. So this is a pretty unfamiliar logic gate. It's weird, okay, it's, it's one of those logic gates you don't see a lot but it's still pretty useful. It's still used a lot, but you don't see it a lot in smaller builds. Okay, so this is exactly what we want. I could have made it a lot tinier, just so you know, but I'm not going to, because I need you guys to see exactly how it works. So, as you can see, it basically says whenever input A and B or unequal power input C so if one is on the other is off it's gonna power the output or output C I mean yeah and then if one if this one is on the other is off it's gonna power output C if they're both off or if they're both on it doesn't power it see they must be unequal to get an output now how does this work let's look into it so basically the redstone leads to a block and it powers this torch let me show you this in action so let's say it powers the torch and these torches are both hooked up to this redstone piece right here so this is like a miniature AND gate for example so this contains another logic gate which is the AND gate so let me just show you real quick so if either of these are on this will be on which turns this off right so these will both have to be off or on I mean in order for this to be on okay so this is an AND gate right and the reason they have this is because let's say they didn't have this let's say they don't have that then it wouldn't function like it should right so we got it like this so let's see when they're both off that's good all right when they're uneven we're good it seems to function normally without the end gate but then when they're both on it's still 
on. That's a problem. So what, what they did is they said, oh look, these torches will make an AND gate here. We can make a little AND gate. The torches power the blocks, which power the redstone. And then we can add an inverter here. And basically lead the redstone on. And then it says, if both of these are on, we want this to be off, right? So they're uneven. Now, these aren't all the logic gates. There are more logic gates, but I'm going to be covering more in the next episode. So if you liked this, if you learned anything at all, anything, then just leave a like. And if you really want to learn more about redstone, get your solid grounding, be able to build awesome calculators and displays and things like that, then subscribe to me because I do plan to upload more of these. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.